Gordon. I feel great today. Oh, you do, huh? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest things censored on TV. Oh, yeah, I know all about the FCC. <laughs> but I'm not afraid. I am not afraid. You know, I wanted to tell you myself. <clears throat> I mean, in my own way. For this list, we'll be looking at various shows of which content curiously caused censors to intervene. Agree with us or siding with the censors? Sound off in the comments. Number 10. Poke Rice Balls Pokemon Our list begins with the first, but certainly not the last, surprising entry in the form of a show for kids. When the aptly named 4Kids Entertainment took over the English dubbing of Pokemon anime for American audiences, they started with some rather unorthodox choices. <laughs> Wanting to ingratiate the Japanese cartoon with its Western audience, the company decided to cut the onigiri. Just to confirm, onigiri are basically balls of rice. Mm -hmm. Most references to these Japanese dishes were changed to something more familiar to American audiences, with the most infamous and meme-generating being Brock's new love of jelly-filled donuts. These donuts are great! Jelly filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly filled donut. Why can't we just call a rice ball a rice ball and move on? Number 9. Fonzie's Fashion Happy Days When we think of Henry Winkler's Happy Days character, the Fonz, there's one particular item of clothing that comes to mind his leather jacket. Are you afraid somebody's gonna steal your little jacket? <laughs> Everybody and their neighbor wanted to be clad in it and ride their motorcycle through the streets. But in the early happy days of season one, Fonzie's fashion was threatened by executives who thought that the getup might give way to trouble and promote bad behavior in its younger viewers. Hey, this is a very nice place you got here. Yeah. My bike likes it. Do you always park your bike in the apartment? Producers got around it by claiming that the attire was riding safety gear, and so he could only wear it if he was close to the bike. Fonzie became so cool with audiences, however, that the stipulation went out the window in later seasons. Oh, the sacrifices I make for you. <laughs> All right, Anne Louise, your prize is coming. Hey! <laughs> Number 8. No No Power Rangers – Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Thus marks the second Americanized adaptation of a Japanese kids show to make this list. Let's do it! Power Rangers! However, this time, it's the Malaysian networks that opted to remove their version of the show from the air, and for a reason that may be considered just a tad tenuous at best. For Malaysia, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was banned for promoting narcotic abuse in children. Yep, you heard that right. According to the censors, the phrase, It's Morphin Time, which was said in almost every episode, sounded too similar to It's Morphine Time. So apparently, the show had to go. It did return later, after someone had the bright idea to drop Morphin from the title. Morph? Metamorphosis. That means to change. Number 7. The Bleepin' FCC Family Guy There's no denying Seth MacFarlane likes to push two things, the envelope and the censor's buttons. Peter, that's it. I asked you to stop this and you didn't listen to me. I'm sorry, but you left me no other choice. I called the FCC. The Federal Communications Commission was often trying to clip Family Guy's wings in the early days. And although the show has fallen foul of the FCC's rules on what is and isn't broadcast worthy on multiple occasions, the first real case of ridiculous censorship proved somewhat apropos. Take a tip, take a lesson, you'll never win by messing with the films yet the freaking FCC. Despite reusing some of the most outlandish visuals in the show's history, Season 4's episode PTV, a hilarious take on, well, censorship, saw producers slapped with said censorship over the use of profanity. Oh, Lois, you are so full of <coughs> What? No, I can't say <coughs> in my own <coughs> house? <coughs> Great, Lois, just <coughs> Great. Apparently, the FCC didn't have a problem with the musical number that tore them to shreds, just the naughty words. Number 6. Naval Coverage I Dream of Genie. Fans of popular 60s sitcom I Dream of Jeannie will remember that Barbara Eden's exotic costume was somewhat revealing, especially for the era of television that it was broadcast in. 
But there's one arguably innocuous part of the actor's body that censors deemed no one was allowed to see, not ever, with no excuses at all costs. We are referring, of course, to her belly button. <laughs> Sure, sure. I'll wait till General Stone sees you. For some reason, this was considered much too lewd for television audiences to see, and every effort was made to ensure Jeannie's costume was properly fit to cover up her offensive navel. Similar costume necessities were mandated for Marianne on Gilligan's Island for fear that if one umbilicus was shown, the world would end. Or something. Miss Marianne. Now you just relax, dear. And you tell us in your own sweet, charming, simple way what it is that you want most out of life. Number five, don't show the water closet. Leave it to Beaver. The censors of old really were a funny bunch. We could understand them taking a moral stance on toilet humor appearing on daytime broadcasts, but actual toilets? Surely that's a bit sensitive. Is this all there is? Yet for a time, it was a rule some networks had, that a toilet, or even a bathroom, was not to be shown on screen. So when Leave it to Beaver came along with a story that centered around protagonists raising a baby alligator in one, CBS and the showrunners had to compromise. All right, Captain Jack, back into your aquarium. Instead of showing the full throne, only the tank could be seen, and only when it was absolutely necessary. The questionable treatment of the animal was okay, though, so that's fine. Now, if he stays here, he's apt to get sick or lonely or, or, or wander out in the street and get run over. Boys, he belongs where he's happy. Number four. No, Lucy is enceinte. I love Lucy. Following up ridiculous things that could not be seen, we now have natural processes that couldn't be heard of. You don't suppose... I don't suppose what? You don't suppose you're gonna have a baby? Oh, of course not! <laughs> Apparently, children in the 1950s were delivered by storks, since CBS mandated that women weren't allowed to be preg- wait, can we say that word? Expectant mothers were taboo on screens for a long time. So when Lucille Ball was with child during filming of I Love Lucy's second season, showrunners had to find ways to acknowledge her baby bump without acknowledging her impending labor. A baby?! <laughs> Yeah, baby. That's a word my grandmother made up for tiny little people. The P word was deemed too vulgar to use in an episode's title, so they replaced it with its French equivalent, Lucy is enceinte. We're having a baby, my baby and me. Sounds like the censors were complètement débile, or completely stupid. Number three, boldly going where no network has gone before, Star Trek. When it comes to breaking new ground, few franchises can ever claim to have done so much with its vision of an inclusive, non-prejudiced future than Star Trek. Where I come from, size, shape, or color makes no difference. The original series Bridge Crew included a black communications officer, a Japanese-American helmsman, a Russian navigator, and a Vulcan whose portrayer incorporated Hebrew iconography into everyday movements. Gene Roddenberry's vision saw no division, and it spread to its lead star. I'm so frightened, Captain. I'm so very frightened. An interracial kiss between Uhura and Kirk was expected to end up on the cutting room floor, but William Shatner deliberately wasted the day's filming getting the controversial kiss shot right, and then botched the safe alternative take, ensuring it couldn't be used in favor of the groundbreaking moment. Number two, stonewalling the writers. Dynasty. Unfortunately, this censorship is still rather recent and made worse by the fact that showrunners buckled under pressure instead of standing firm with their ideology. Well, how the hell can anybody respect the opinion of a man who put his hands on another man? When it emerged that one of Dynasty's main characters, Stephen Carrington, was written to be openly gay, Actor Al Corley jumped at the chance to make television history and took the role. How'd you find out? <clears throat> Do you use detectives? I... I just found out, that's all. 
For the first season, this was going extremely well, but as the show continued, fundamentalists started complaining to advertisers, and the show's writers began to pull Steven's sexual identity towards ambivalence. Unimpressed with this direction, Corley left the show, and Jack Coleman took over the role. I even prepared to say that I could find little homosexual experimentation acceptable. Dynasty did attempt to revisit Steven's storyline, but it was not as trend-setting. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Getting Kids Off the Street – Sesame Street it's hard to imagine that this stalwart of children's television and of American culture would ever have found itself courting controversy. But in its early days, that's exactly what happened. I said, hey. In 1970, Mississippi banned Sesame Street for its portrayal of racial inclusivity in schools. To the State Commission for Educational Television, the street was too multicultural, nor was it adherent to the segregational message it wanted from Mississippi's young. Hey, listen, you know where we live, right? So stop by any time you get a chance, okay? Luckily, common sense and decency prevailed, probably when they noticed that the preschool viewers didn't care if the person on screen was black, white, or a big yellow bird. Big bird, the star's closed, you know. Oh yes, Susan, I'm just looking at the signs, because I'm using signs to practice learning words. Oh, that's a good idea. The ban, or postponement as it was known, was over after several months, and many complaints. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.